Okay, at this time I do want to welcome our panelists, our members of the community, and our guests. Uh, we have our uh, first vice president, Jennifer Dolan, and she will do an introduction to Measure U. Uh, it will include history and a current analysis. Hello. So, lest you think I prepared a bunch of stuff, this is the impartial analysis by the city attorney. Um, I needed a little bit of background on this myself. I didn't remember 2012 what we had really voted on. So, if you can see up, uh, I, I went ahead and uh, borrowed from Ballotpedia kind of the results of our, our past uh, Measure U 2012. So in 2012, Santa Maria voters approved Measure U-2012, authorizing temporary sales tax to fund general city services. The U-2012 tax rate is one quarter of one percent, sometimes referred to as a quarter cent because it adds a quarter cent to the price of an item that costs one dollar, if the item is normally subject to sales tax. Santa Maria City Council has placed Measure U-2018 on the ballot to ask voters of Santa Maria if the city should continue the sales tax and increase the rate to one cent or 1%. The sales tax is also referred to as a transactions and use tax. If approved by a majority of voters, the one cent sales tax would become operative on April 1st, 2019. The proposed increased City of Santa Maria sales tax would be collected at the same time and in the same manner as existing sales taxes. The proposed increased sales tax would continue until repealed by voters. As a general local tax approved by the voters of Santa Maria, Measure U 2018 revenue must be placed in the city's general fund and used for general governmental purposes, including funding public safety and essential services. The state cannot take the revenue from Measure U 2018 for its own use. General governmental purposes include neighborhood police patrols, firefighter staffing, gang suppression and enforcement, crime, graffiti, vandalism pre prevention, 9-11 medical response times, library recreation, homelessness, at-risk youth programs, and other general functions and services. The measure would require the city to conduct annual independent audits by no later than December 31st of each year, and the audit would include the Measure U 2018 revenue raised and expended for the prior fiscal year. In addition, the measure provides that the Citizens Oversight Committee previously created by the city, Santa Maria City Council as required by U 2012 will continue to review and report on the revenue and expenditure of the funds from this tax. The annual independent audit would be provided to the Citizens Oversight Committee for their review. The committee will continue to consist of not more than five residents of the city to be appointed by the City Council. City, ca city employees, consultants, and vendors are prohibited from serving on this oversight committee. A yes vote is a vote to approve the sales tax extension and increase, and a no vote is a vote against extending and increasing the tax. Measure U 2018 would be approved if it received a simple majority of yes votes. If we could go ahead and have Ann come on up and she will explain kind of our format tonight. It's a little bit different if you've been to our candidate format. format so, Thanks, Jennifer. And again, welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming tonight. We really appreciate that. And we'll, we really appreciate Mr. Russ Nagel and Mr. Gail McNeely for agreeing to be on this panel discussion tonight. And they have agreed to the following format. Um, and we would just like you to know kind of what to expect for the rest of the evening. And we um, are happy that you're going to abide by it also. Um, first of all, each of the panelists will each have three minutes to just give a general um, introduction about themselves, including their background, their education, their experience, and their own interest in this uh, Measure U. Then, each panelist will have ten minutes to explain his assertions about Measure U and present supporting documentation and information. Then at that time, we will take a 10-minute break to stand up, stretch, talk, get a little sip of water, but more importantly, to write out any questions that you have for the panelists. We only entertain written questions. So if you have a question that develops throughout the course of the first part, be sure and jot it down. We will collect them. Then during the second part of the evening, we will entertain uh, the written questions and we will entertain hopefully as many as we have time for. Each panelist will have three minutes to answer each of those questions. Three minutes is the max. 
and when we begin the question and answer period, we'll start with Mr. McNeely. He will go first, followed by Mr. Mangle, then it will reverse. So we'll keep reversing it as to who goes first. Nobody gets to go first all the time, nor is anybody last all of the time. We like to be fair. And then <clears throat> probably around 745, we'll think about concluding. You're going to be tired of sitting. Your brain will be on overload, we hope. And then each panelist will have about four minutes each to present a concluding statement. So any questions about that? Okay. Um, again, we would like to thank our uh, translator, um, Yvette Peralta, who, as she said, is in the back. So if you'd like assistance, be sure and avail yourselves of her services. We appreciate that. So um, are the panelists ready? Okay, then we will start with you, Mr. Mangle. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you for having me here tonight. It's a great opportunity to come here and speak on behalf of well, the community of Santa Maria and the concerns that exist currently in our community. I grew up in Northern California in the community of Eureka, a small town on the coast up there. And back in 1996, I was beginning my law enforcement career. And I, I met a young woman I was rather impressed with. And she brought me down here for a Christmas visit to meet her family as we had just become engaged. And that gave me the opportunity to meet somebody who uh, was a role model and mentor in my life, um, Harold Fletcher, somebody who was a huge advocate of this community for many years. Harold convinced me that this is the greatest place on earth to live. And so we, we started our family down here and have been on the Central Coast now for nearly 22 years. Um, I've continued my career in law enforcement. My formal education is in criminal justice. I'm starting to pursue a master's degree, looking ahead to uh, what retirement may bring 10 years or so down the road, and maybe looking at media or marketing. Currently enrolled at Boston University with an online course or curriculum that they have there. Um, that's pretty much it for myself tonight. My name is Gail Joseph Patrick McNeely. I'm from County Cleveland in Ohio, and uh, we have something in common. We both spent time in Humboldt County. We both taught at Humboldt State University. Uh, I taught I taught clowning, and I think you taught. Uh, what did you teach? Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Right. So we both. But he, when I moved to Humboldt County, he was three years old. Let, let's put it that. Let's put it that way. Uh, my background. I have a very background. Uh, actually, I. Many of you know me as a performer, a writer, uh, a, sat a satirical uh, singer. Uh, I've also gotten, especially since the election of 2016, I've gotten more involved in, in local government because I think that's where we can make a difference. And so I came here to uh, Santa Maria uh, to work at PCPA back in 1985. Uh, and I've worked a number of years at PCPA as a performer and as a teacher at the conservatory before settling here in 2002. Uh, so I'm happy to be here too. Uh, I'm honored to have you as an honored appointment. I, I, I'm an opponent. They say I'm a con, but I'm not a con. I know you're a policeman and <laughs> you, you would want to know that. Uh, I've never been in jail, but I did work for Poetic Justice Project. Uh, and, uh, and I have to admit that too. So I'm looking forward to the discourse we're going to have tonight. Sounds like we're off to a good start. Okay, now um, the next part is we will ask each of you to explain your assertions about Measure U. So do you want to go ahead, Mr. Mangle, starting with you? Um, do we have some slides? There we go. That, that looks like it. So much like we saw in the introduction um, from the city attorney's office, uh, measure, U is an, measure U 2018 is an extension of the existing voter approved um, public safety sales tax. Measure U provides local funding for police, fire, and other essential services in the community. And actually the third slide, that one of the biggest issues that we're faced with at this time is over the past 25 years, Sacramento um, has taken more than $55 million from Santa Maria's local tax dollars to address the state's budget issues. 
Uh, Measure U 2018 is an attempt to address some of the budget shortfalls that exist in our community, uh, specifically for public safety. Uh, so Measure U 2018 is, would be an extension of Measure U 2012 that would increase the sales, the sales tax rate um, to 1% or 1 cent. And estimations uh, indicate that it would mean approximately $18 million for the city to put into public safety uh, issues. Uh, specifically, some of those public safety issues, uh, one of greatest concern to some of my partners uh, in the fire service here in this community are the response times. Measure U uh, will protect that five minute goal that they've tried to establish for response call fires and medical emergencies um, by maintaining the uh, five or six actual fire stations they have here in the city. For law enforcement here in the city of Santa Maria, it'd be critical to maintaining the services we are, that are already provided by them, but also help to address issues that exist in our community, such as gang violence um, and other issues involving children and commercial establishments. Uh, Measure U also allows for the funding of youth services, uh, after school programs, anti-gang youth outreach programs, and it with a particular focus on at-risk children. Measure U supports sports recreation activities through our recreation, or through the city's recreation and parks department. And Measure U also has provisions to provide support for the library and other city facilities to provide a safe environment for the children in this community. Uh, Measure U as it's written, continues the city's tradition of fiscal responsibility, one that's existed ever since I've been here on the Central Coast. The city, the city council, city administration does an excellent job of uh, accounting for the funds that come from its taxpayers and making sure that they are spent appropriately. And yes, on Measure U um, is supported currently by local business, many community leaders, some of them are here tonight, um, police, and, uh, police and fire associations and unions, the Santa Maria Chamber of Commerce, Cause Action Fund, um, as well as other prominent officials and past uh, employees of the city of Santa Maria. Um, thank you. Okay, uh, as an overall statement, I'd like to say the city of Santa Maria has been involved in an arc of growth for decades now. Uh, it's very fast growth. You, I might look at it and say that the city doesn't know a development it doesn't like, that it, 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 it approves development after development, and what's happening is that the services can't keep up with the growth that we have in terms of schools, in terms of uh, our infrastructure. It doesn't pay for itself. And so the city is in a position where they turn to us for more taxes. Uh, the, the other thing I'd like to say is that the government that we are living under is not open and transparent. Many decisions are made behind closed doors. One example is the extension of Measure U. Uh, all of us saw this coming down the pike. Uh, the city came to us. I know I, I, I was at the Democratic Club when, when a representative came and spoke to us, but the way it was presented was that they were thinking, the city was thinking of extending Measure U, and they wanted us to take a survey. Now, how was this survey put together? Well, they had a firm that they paid $25,000 to initially to call 400 people to find out the best way to pose the questions so that they could get the answers that they wanted. This is substantiated uh, in writings that have been done about the process. All right, and so the questions are kind of like, when did you stop beating your wife? They're, they're, they lead you right. First of all, on this page, they tell you all the things they want the answers for and the exact answers they want, and then they give you all the choices here of the things that they want you to say, basically. And it was all sold on the basis of public safety. Now, whereas most of us would say a 0.25% tax to continue the essential services that are being paid for it right now, 
seems reasonable. The question is, is a 1% tax necessary? That's the question. And also, the big, the big one, uh, the city manager came to the city council and said, everyone who took this uh, survey knew that we wanted to extend the tax uh, indefinitely without end and that it would be 1%. That is not true. That was not mentioned. If the city came to our groups and said, we want to increase the tax to 1% and there will be no sunset unless the voters end it. I want you to consider what that means. That means that we, as the citizens, have to convince the city council to end the tax, or we have to pay for a measure on the ballot to end the tax. This was not talked about when the city came to all of these groups and got the feedback that they wanted with the questions that they asked. And I think that that's wrong. I think an open and transparent government would have talked to us about that. We need to raise the tax to 1% because of X, Y, and Z. If you look at what's happening in the city, there was an article in the, in the uh, Santa Maria Times that said this, the report shows sales tax revenue up by 8.4% or around 1,779,000 and property tax revenue up by 9.5% or around 1,647,000. What's happening is the city is taking in more revenue than they predicted. On Measure U, and this is the 0.25%, which provides money for public safety services, it had revenues exceeded expenditures by about $207,000. So the, the sources of revenue that the city already has are increasing, all right? Every, every resource is increasing for the city. And at a time like this, they're saying, we need to raise more money. What are they going to spend the money on? Well, the wording of the, of the proposition tells you a lot. It basically says, the authority to levy tax imposed by this chapter shall, ex oh, that's the expiration. Uh, the other one is, the proceeds of the tax approved by the ordinance may be used for unrestricted general revenue purposes. Think about that, unrestricted general revenue purposes. That means anything. All right, yes, the focus, and I believe the city when they say that they want to put the money toward, toward safety, but safety is not the only thing we need. We need to redevelop the downtown area. A lot of talk, a lot of plans, no action. I have talked to members of the commissions who have been planning for the downtown area. They describe what could be there they said those plans are in drawers, all right? There's no civic center, not really. We have a mall that's dying. When Macy's and Sears goes, what is the plan? What is going to happen? Cities like Pasadena, Santa Monica, opened their mall up, open air mall, fountains. They created a cityscape. We should have mixed use housing all up Main and Broadway. Where are the plans for that? Where is the city on that? We have a thousand kids playing soccer and they don't have enough soccer fields. The city writes one grant for $1.2 million. They don't get the money for it. And they say, well, we, we did our best. We'll try again. Well, if you're going to raise 18 to 20 million more dollars a year on Measure U, you bet you should be building soccer fields with some of that money. If you're looking for gang prevention, if you're looking for helping at-risk youth, you should be spending the money on programs that do that. The slide up there said 90% of the Measure U money was spent on safety. And here's what the city council can do. They can take the revenue from Measure U and put that 90% of that 18 million a year toward public safety, opening up the funds to cover pensions. They can spend that money now on pensions. They've just moved the cup game. They've moved the cups around. We'll give them permission by voting for this measure to move the cups around and move the funds around so that they can have all the public safety money that they want from Measure U 
and still cover all their other needs. But the city did not sit down with, the, with all the groups, all the stakeholders and say, what do you want? They, they put out this, this feedback survey, but they told you what we wanted there. They didn't say, what about the soccer fields? What about a civic center? What about a, the development? How much money should we spend there? They didn't ask us about that. They led us to what they wanted us to vote for. Now they're leading us to vote for this measure. I believe that we should say no. I believe that we should leave the 0.25% in place through its sunset, but not through its sunset. In 2020, I asked the new city council, and hopefully we will have a new city council by then, I asked the new city council to put a measure on the ballot for 0.5%, and to negotiate with the, the community about how that money could be spent beyond public safety. I don't think we're treated as adults. I think the city government in Santa Maria feels it knows best, it knows how to do it, it makes the plans behind closed doors, it gets them to us, it makes us feel like we approved it, and now they're asking us to vote for their measure to pay for exactly what they want. I say no to measure you under these circumstances. I spoke to the city council, many are here tonight, and I said if you would sit down and negotiate, if you would, if you would consider uh, the soccer fields, there was never any discussion about those things at all. It was this survey that they directed in this way, and that's why we're here tonight. I hope that we, and Oxnard, by the way, Oxnard did say no, and when, the city came back with the second measure. They included 30% for youth services. They negotiated with the youth. Oxnard said no the first time, came back and said yes. Let them come back to us with a better measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll take about a 10 minute break. Um, if you would like a card to write your question on, raise your hand, we'll get one to you and thank you. All righty, we are ready to begin. Thank you very much. We would like to thank all of you that submitted questions. Um, I don't think time will allow us to have them all addressed. We will do our best to get as many as possible addressed. Um, the first question will be addressed to uh, Mr. McNeely, we'll start, followed by Mr. Mingle. And you're each allowed, allotted a maximum of three minutes. Don't feel that you have to take the full three minutes. Okay, is that, do I have your uh, agreement on that too? Yes. We'd like to get as many in as possible. Okay, our first question is, does the wording of the measure only specify safety for the use of the funds? Does the wording of the measure only specify safety for the funds? Mr. McNeely? Well, the, the exact wording is uh, the essential services including neighborhood staffing, gang suppression enforcement, prevention, 9-11 medical response times, library, homelessness, at-risk youth programs, providing durable fiscal stability, shall the measure be approved adopting an ordinance. So they mention a lot of things, but the actual section that I read before says the proceeds of the tax approved by this ordinance may be used for unrestricted general revenue purposes. That's the exact wording. So you see that's anything. That's anything that the city council deems important. Not to say that they're not going to work toward public safety. Obviously that is a main thrust of it at the same time. But they're not required to put all that money toward public safety. It's any general revenue purposes. Yeah, I think a little bit of wisdom went into the wording of the measure. Um, coming from a law enforcement background and perspective, finding non-traditional ways to resolve public safety issues is something that's critical in this day and age. Due to the change in the court system as well as uh, who gets incarcerated in the state anymore, we've got to find different ways to address these issues, address these problems, make downtown viable um, for economic growth and development. Those issues aren't going to be solved by arresting people. Those issues are going to come through resolutions, working in non-traditional ways 
that this measure will allow the city to have the funds to address those problems, again, and in a non-traditional law enforcement role because it does allow some ambiguity in the wording. So again, some wisdom went into the way it was worded to be able to resolve community issues through perhaps non-traditional law enforcement approaches. So again, we can't arrest our way out of the problems in this community. Might, might I just add that I would suggest that the city council then should go to the youth and ask them what the needs are. That hasn't been done in the city, not really. The, new, the youth were not included on the task force, the, the uh, mayor's tax task force until the very end, uh, and only two, and then their names weren't even listed as members. Uh, we need to respect the needs of our youth and the youth themselves. When the youth did 100 people, did a town hall, youth did a town hall, these are the problems, these are the solutions, no city council person came to even hear what they had to say. So there's, there's a gap. Thank you. Our next question, and Mr. Mango, we will ask that you address it first. Is there a guarantee that Measure U funds won't be used to pay employee pensions? Um, I don't believe the wording in, in the measure allows for that. Our employee pension uh, costs an issue the city is working and dealing with? Yes, it is. Right now, there's currently an $8.5 million budget uh, shortfall that's being covered by one-time expenditures or essentially a savings account in the community. Um, when those monies are gone, critical public safety services are going to be cut. That's a fire station from this community. That's going to be police officers. Potentially, some, some estimates, up to 20 positions at the police department. Those will be services that are not provided to this community. As it is now, um, some of the wait times for calls for service uh, for the police department are as long as three and four hours. Um, that's why Measure U 2018 is so critical, is to address the, the shortcomings of the budget due to, in part, the mismanagement by state government, which created some of these issues like pension deficits and things of that nature. But in the end, it's going to provide critical services to this community and also enhance the services that we provide down the road um, in regards to law enforcement and fire. Again, I would just point out that if, the, if we had $18 million to put toward public services, uh, then that money that would have been spent from the general fund on public services could be transferred over to the pension fund instead. So it's, it's moving money around. You could move the money around if you had enough to pay for all of the fire and safety that you want. Yeah, and, and those costs are going to be there regardless of how you want to call it. The, the pension costs will be an issue for the city for the next seven, potentially eight years. So however it's covered, it will be an issue. But then they will go down. I was just talking to Mike Cordero. There, there is a there's a time that they're going to be go going down to a manageable level. So having a tax without end doesn't make sense if you know that the pension costs are coming down and you're going to continue to get that 18 to 20 million from the taxpayers in the meantime forever. Thank you. Uh, the next question, Mr. Uh, McNeely, we will begin with you. The city has an $8.5 million deficit. So how can it afford to build and maintain soccer fields? Well, if they're taking in 18 to 20 million a year on Measure U, there would be a million two left over to pay for soccer fields. I was just talking uh, to Dr. Motes, and he says that the, they may have found some space that the city could rent for 20 years for soccer fields, and those could be developed. I don't think that the city should stand back and say we're not going to invest in soccer fields because we need all our money for safety. Uh, if there's a deficit of 18, 8 million and they're going to bring in 18 to 20, with Measure U, spend some of that on soccer fields. Uh, Measure U does uh, allow for the expenditure of funds on youth recreation to address problems within our community like the gangs or other youth issues. Uh, youth in this community have been a part of what went into developing Measure U 2018. I'm not sure uh, which, which meetings Gail was able to attend, but I've attended probably a half dozen myself. 
with a couple hundred kids giving their feedback and input into what it takes to have an environment, a community, where they feel safe, where they can attend school, knowing that you know everything is going to be all right as they come and go from their school site. Also then the recreational opportunities that exist in the after school programs and on weekends. That's all been a part of the conversation that's been taking place in this community for the past three years. Okay, and I, and I work with kids too. I have a program called Youth Arts Alive. And it's something, I, I know some people who came to our final performance at the Maldonado Center where, where 60 youth performed for their families things that they had learned in five weeks of arts education. One of the members of the audience says, why isn't the city doing this themselves? Why don't they sponsor this program? It's a wonderful program. So Youth Arts Alive is a, is a program that the city might sponsor that gives free arts education to the underserved communities uh, in, in, in the city. And uh, each, each council person could, could be an advocate for their area and say, we want a site here, we want classes here, we want Parks and Rec to sponsor these classes. So it is, and I, I appreciate that you're meeting with the youth. I'm not saying that no one meets with the youth. I didn't mean that. Uh, Mr. Mango, can you begin the discussion on this, please? If the city spent $25,000 for the consultant and got 400 responses, that's $62.50 per response. Why so expensive? I think what it goes into is somebody with the subject matter expertise, the individuals that were contracted um, by the Yes on Measure U committee, our exploratory committee to see the viability of this measure in our community. Um, and these are people that have been successful in uh, other endeavors throughout the state of California. This type of initiative isn't something new. There's currently 21 other communities in the state that are taking on this, this type of tax initiative currently. The, to reach out um, for the, again, subject matter expert to give us some starting point and also some critical feedback to see if it was even viable to move forward was something that was important. Honestly, a, a good expenditure of funds. If it had not occurred, I could see it being more expensive to go out and try to get a consensus uh, just based on local knowledge or expertise. Again, I would just suggest that, uh, that this particular group taught the city how to ask the right questions to get the right answers and that's proved in the, in the information about the process itself. They found out the right wording so that you could get the answers you were looking for. So the, these groups are PR firms, basically. And, and we understand the city needs to have good public relations. That's not the question. The question is how much real input do you want from the community? That's the question. Well, I think the ultimate input's gonna come in November. Yes, it will. But the, but the tables are, are skewed at the moment because people don't know what they're voting on. Mr. McNeely um, and then Mr. Mengel. If the city knew they needed money to support essential services, why then did the city vote against allowing cannabis sale in the city when it is perfectly legal in the state? Boy, I... That is a very good question. I do not know. I think basically our city council is more moralistic than realistic. Uh, they look, they no, they look at pot as a moral issue, you know, and that it's going to ruin our kids. The kids who want pot will be going to Lompoc regularly and driving under the influence. All right. The fact that our city council, thank God, Dr. Motes at least preserved the delivery of medical marijuana, whereas the other council people were not even for that. All right, so it's a moralistic view of marijuana instead of a realistic view of marijuana. If I were on the city council, I would want dispensaries under the law protected in the community. I would want that. And deliveries, by the way, just a point on deliveries, a lot of people get robbed on deliveries. Do you know that? Someone offers to sell pot, they go to, the person goes to the house and they rob them. Because they know that this person has money ready to pay for, for marijuana. That's why dispensaries, like the one that was planned in Napomo, were a very good idea. 
All the groundwork was done. But Lynn Compton, no, no way, not in my district, uh-uh. All right, all the work was done to have a good dispensary and under control. We have to start being realistic about this. <laughs> Where to begin on the marijuana issue? We can take a look first at Denver, Colorado. Colorado was one of the first states to legalize it for recreation. We can look at what has occurred there economically after the passage of recreational marijuana and also what's occurred culturally and civilly in that community. It's devastated the, the, the Denver area. The businesses, um, it, it, it's hurt them. Many are leaving, going to other places. Uh, it's also occurred here in California. As I mentioned, I, I grew up in Humboldt County. The sheriff of Humboldt County is Bill Hansel. He is my best friend growing up. We went through school together. and I was just up there last month, and he took me around to the community we grew up in. And the legalization of marijuana has destroyed that community. There are more open, vacant storefronts um, than anybody can ever remember in recent past. The promise of big revenues coming in through the taxation of the legalized marijuana have not panned out at any location that has legalized it. Uh, the, the promises of it just aren't occurring. It's, it's one third of the promised tax revenues being collected. So marijuana isn't the solution that some people like to uh, make it out to be. It comes with tremendous consequences. Also with marijuana today, it's not, uh, it's not my grandparents' marijuana. Um, it's, it's, it's a little different. The THC levels are near 100% in many cases. Emergency room visits are up. Mental health cases are up significantly. Just saw a study recently, I believe it was out of Canada, that tied the um, mental health issue of manic depressive directly to THC in the last week. Um, so we're learning more about the consequences of the legalization of marijuana. I applaud the city council in keeping it out of this community and helping us have a, a community where we don't have to deal with issues like Denver, uh, Seattle, some of these other metropolises that went the other way. I guess my answer to that would be I don't have all the knowledge that you have, Russ, but I do know that this isn't going to keep it out of our community. It's just going to be prohibition, and it won't be alcohol. It'll be prohibition of liquor, and there will be problems in, in buying and selling marijuana in the area without a place that you can legally do it, and there will be problems uh, in, in going out of the area to get it and, and coming back. Yeah, they're still getting it, whether legal or not. Um, currently, we, it's an issue we deal with every day, right. and I think there's adequate measures in place. But the legalization of it as a solution for any financial issues for municipality is not a good solution. And we can point to many, many examples. I, I can talk with you all night, um, having to pick and choose what topics to bring up in this short format. Okay. Well, I, I believe it, it, it. I'm not for it for the the money part of it. I'm for it for the human part of it. That it's a choice. Uh, that we have to make as human beings, all right? It's our right. Um, and I think the moral issue is the, is the controlling issue in this city. We're, we're behind the curve on that. And we'll see how Santa Barbara County does. I mean, Santa Barbara County, is it, they're getting some sites going. But those are test sites. If they work well, the city could consider it again. That's what I think. Mr. Mangle, <clears throat> what specific after-school programs have been funded by the current tax? Through recreation and parks, there's a couple programs that take place. Again, 91% 90, of the um, Measure U 2012 has gone to public safety. That leaves only 9%. Some of it's spent administratively for individuals to manage, monitor, and uh, record uh, where the monies have gone. Other programs, though, are through recreation and parks um, and the work that they do. Most frequently at the Maldonado Center. Um, current, there's one other, it slips my mind. Um, can't remember what it was. Um, but th there are programs currently, however, again, 91% goes directly to public safety. Measure U 2018 will allow for more revenue to open up further opportunities. One of the uh, communities I was talking with in preparation for tonight they use the uh, recreation and parks program to um, do the PAL program to involve police officers. We have PAL. It's something that our officers can be directly involved with and fall within the, the means and measures of Measure U 2018. 
And I, I would just repeat that, that some of the money can be used, more of the money could be used for youth. And if we look back to Oxnard, I didn't get to really say that clearly, but in the city of Oxnard, they tried to pass a 1% tax and it failed because they didn't really go to the community and see what the needs were. The community met with them privately. You see, with a tax like this, if you say specifically what you're going to pay for, you need two-thirds of the vote. So the city is, is in a kind of a conundrum there. They can't say that. They have, to, they have to put out, it could be used for X, Y, and Z, but it's any general, general use. That's the way they have to say it. But the city, I was saying to Mike Cordero, the city could sit down with all the youth organizations and say, what are your needs and what will get you to support our measure? We'll promise to put money in, into soccer fields or whatever needs you, you determine are most important. One Community Action did a great study of what youth need, but the city did not use it. The city took the study and said, oh, okay, over there. Now we're going to do our own study. And I, and I must say the Youth Task Force uh, was, was not, a, 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 it didn't produce what it was supposed to produce. What it did was bring all of the stakeholders who were already doing these issues together to talk about how they might do them better. But not a lot of progress has been made. N not new things happening. And so there's some internships. That was going to happen anyway. All right, so the city has to be more modern and more visionary in what they do with the money. They have to look for programs that work for youth, and they have to look to the youth to find out what those programs are. Mr. McNeely, can city businesses remain competitive with extra sales tax? Well, the problem right now is that all our attention is going to Better Ravia Road. All right? Uh, Enos Ranch... Uh, has sucked all the energy out of the downtown area and the stores that are closing Michaels but you, you name the stores that are closing the empty buildings that we have uh, the mayor when she ran for mayor she said that small businesses were the core of the community and she wanted to work for small businesses and then she and the city council put all the business out in Enos Ranch instead do you see what's happening to the downtown as a result of that? Okay, that is not a vision for, for what could be that. And all of these, all of these uh, groups that are, are, are out on Enos, they are uh, just minimum wage jobs where most of the money goes out of the community. Yes, the sales tax. Uh, for them, the sales tax, they, they don't mind paying that at all because they're making a lot of money in the, in the, or may make a lot of money. Some of those businesses may fail too, we don't know. But so, so that... The, the tax revenue of the big businesses, the Chick-fil-A's and stuff like that, th that's part of the equation. The tax revenue for small businesses, that may affect them. The mom and pop businesses that still exist and there aren't too many of them. Why in the world we wouldn't want a lot of multi mixed use housing downstairs? Uh, Dr. Motz and I talked about the one unit that has been approved at the corner of Main and Broadway. We need 20 of those. We need 40 of those on Main and Broadway to start bringing people living downtown, shopping downtown with, with good little businesses underneath. We can't put all our attention uh, toward Orchid. <laughs> That's basically where everything's going. Everything's moving to Orchid. And downtown San Diego, uh, I, I'm from San Diego. Uh, downtown Santa Maria is suffering. And I don't know why the city council doesn't understand how much downtown Santa Maria is suffering and I don't know why they don't invest in the downtown area because they have all the plans they need they're all in drawers thank goodness for Enos Ranch Measure U 2012 took a boost from 4.2 million dollars to 4.5 million dollars in large part because of Enos Ranch and the revenues that were gained through the sales tax collected there downtown it's it's I think collectively even even talking with Gail we have a similar vision for where it could go, but we're not Santa Barbara, we're not San Luis Obispo. Downtown isn't going to be like those communities overnight anytime soon. Downtown is going to be a work in progress. Measure U 2018 will give the city the resources it needs to put officers downtown. Um, some years ago, I supervised a bike patrol unit, one of the most effective ways to police downtown. And it gave us a vision of what is possible downtown. 
but it's not something that we can sustain now. Due to the $8.5 million shortfall, we've canceled all bike patrols. There are no downtown bike patrols, and the issues that existed prior to the deployment have returned. The business owners have contacted me, inquiring as to what can be done short term to address those issues, and there's just simply not because the finances are just aren't there. That's why it's so critical that Measure U 2018 does get the yes vote in November. Without it, um, anybody's plans for downtown are not going to happen. Well, I, I agree with a lot of what you say. I do believe that we need more than straight, uh, safe streets, though we need beautiful streets. We need landscaping. Uh, we need good uh, pavement. There's a lot of things that have, have been, they haven't been taken care of. Uh, I know a lady who broke her arm tripping on the sidewalk uh, near the downtown area. So we, we, we have a lot of things to do to the infrastructure and to the landscaping and to the beautification of our city that I don't think are being taken care of. Uh, if Fala's ever uh, closes, that would be our civic center. We could start there. Parks, fountains, beautiful, beautiful foliage, uh, get people to come downtown and then build up the, the, the corridors around it. I'm not saying we can be Santa Barbara or San Luis Obispo, but we could be Santa Maria as we really are, culturally diverse, all right? And, and a lot of times we don't look into that cultural diversity. Even in our schools, they don't want to do cultural and gender studies, things that are so important. We have to embrace who we are and not who we were. We're still living in the world of who we were. And this will be the last question um, for the evening, and we will begin with you, Mr. Mingle. If this 1% tax is on sales, and people in unincorporated areas buy in Santa Maria, what benefit is there to the ORCID folks? <laughs> the, um, the, the question is absolutely dead on. Uh, the tax revenue is going to come from anybody that shops in Santa Maria. Uh, people from Orchid that come into Santa Maria to buy are going to be able to go to a shopping center and not have the safety and security issues that exist currently. Right now, we don't have the resources to push out to address some of these problems that exist in our community. Um, just last week, uh, there, there was an event that occurred in a part of the city, uh, a murder that occurred in a part of the city that hardly ever sees any violent crime whatsoever. I was over there at a friend's house today, and they are terrifying. They did not understand what was going on in the community, the issues that exist in the community, the public safety crisis that's about to occur if we don't make up for that $8.5 million. Measure U 2012 was a shot in the arm. It was, it was a boost. It got us through some critical times here in Santa Maria. But looking at where Santa Maria has been, where Santa Maria is at today, and where Santa Maria can go in the future is something that we can make happen with Measure U 2018. It is about public safety. It is about our youth. The youth are the future of this community. And it's about a city council, one right now that unanimous, unanimously supports Measure U 2018. That's going to give us the roadmap to carry on in the future with uh, the decisions that are going to be made, the progress, the potential progress that can be achieved. Uh, it's, it's vitally important. Um, again, it sounds like Gail has more of a concern or is issue with the process rather than what we want to carry out. There is no um, sunset date on Measure U 2018. I think that's another wise move by the City Council in the writing of the um, item, is that they have to report back to you, the uh, voters, every year. They might get away with shenanigans one year, probably not two or three in this community. This community holds its elected officials accountable. This isn't Sacramento, this is Santa Maria. And again, as there's issues and concerns, they can be addressed with your elected officials. And where the money needs to be spent, it'll be spent. Okay, uh, uh, Russ, in, in terms of process or, or not, the process, I, I think it was a bad process, yes. I think that's true. But I think the tax itself is all, also problematic in that uh, I think the city's asking for one more than they can spend and two they're not really telling us what they're going to do with the money all right 
so that those two things bother me. As a taxpayer, don't you want to know what your tax money is going for? That's a basic question I think we have to ask about any tax. And if the city can't say specifically, even uh, what, they, what they've given us is a palette rather than specifics, all right? So uh, bad process, and I think uh, the, the tax is obviously, people come from market to spend money at Enos Ranch. That is going to increase the tax revenue. That, that's not in question. But also, I think that the city has to have a balance between what we're doing with downtown and, and, and the orchid side of our city. We have to have a balance. Right now, we're off balance. And I'm asking the city council to bring us on balance again by reinvesting in the downtown area and really doing it, not just looking at plans, but enacting the plans. Okay, this concludes the question and answer period of this evening's presentation. We'll begin with our second to the last part of the program, and that is each of you will have four minutes for a final statement on Measure U. Mr. McNeely, we will begin with you and then conclude with you, Mr. Mangel. Well, I, I think I've said most everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't hold back. So, so uh, I think... Re Go, going through what I've said already doesn't make as much sense. Um, basically, the, the city is calling, crying deficits all the time. Think about that. Deficits all the time. Uh, and that's why we need to tax you. Uh, think of the developers. This is what the city doesn't do. The city doesn't get everything from the developers that they could be getting from them. They, when they meet about a project, they say, well, the developers say, well, we can't, well, you know, we're doing this landscaping, that costs us dollars, and, and we have a fire pit, and uh, couldn't that, you know, and the city's always going, oh, okay, oh, okay, we'll, we'll let you off on that, oh, okay, you don't have to pay for that, oh, okay, we want your development, so we're going to be easy on you, oh, okay. So they're not getting the best value for the taxpayer from every <coughs> development. I found, I, I've, I've talked to council people about this, and this is one of the council people I talked to said, this is the way it happens, the developers. Basically, I'm going to be honest, the developers wine and dine the city council. They do. And they're friends. If everyone on the city council said they, who was a member of Colab would step forward, we'd have a majority of the city council who support Colab, who listen to Colab, who listened to Andy Caldwell, who believe what he believes, who believes in that form of government, who believes that developers and agribusiness should be running our city. This is what's happening in our city. Colab is like the elephant in the room that people don't talk about. A lot of people don't even know that Colab exists because it's a secret organization. They will not reveal their membership. Yes. And the fundraisers down at Shumash a thousand people, our city council people go there, some of them do, because they've been members, they're founding members, some of them. They go down there. The main item that they have on the silent auction is guns. And a couple of years ago, the main speaker was talking about environmentalists as being green on the outside and red on the inside, and passed out pens that were green on the outside and red on the inside, because all environmentalists are communists. And this is the group that our city council goes to their meetings and funds them and listens to them. So are, are we surprised when we as the voter don't really get listened to and agribusiness and developers do get listened to? I'm not surprised. That's the way of business. That's the good old boys and the good old girls of Santa Maria running the city the way they've always run it. And that has got to end. <coughs> Um, tonight I'm here for Measure U 2018. I don't know about the political issues that were just addressed, but to give the community an idea of what public safety is faced with, in the past five years, we are, let me go to six years on this topic, we've had 35 homicides in this community. The manpower resources required to investigate these homicides is incredible. Um, the detectives assigned to these cases, assigned to some as far back as 2015, are still working on them today. 
and it's anticipated they'll be in court for two years on some of those cases. Forcible rapes in this community in the last five years, 240. Robberies, 741. Aggravated assaults, 1,413. Burglary, 2,939. Larceny and other theft, 7,726. Motor vehicle theft, 3,671. Arsons, 59. That just covers the law enforcement side of the work that the law enforcement officers are faced with here in this community. Our fire department, they're busy. Last week, they ran over 800 calls for service. Over 400 of those were medical aid calls. They need more resources as well. They're looking at, um, it's actually uh, perhaps an older idea for those that are uh, 1970s television fans, the show Emergency, running a rescue squad to provide medical aid. They're looking at new ways to better manage the budget, the resources that they do have. The fiscal responsibility does exist in this community. They're looking how to get the maximum resources out of the dollars that we do have. But that doesn't erase the $8.5 million shortfall that exists that will cut police and fire services. We're looking to the future. These crime statistics aren't looking better. We're at four homicides for the year right now in 2018. Um, some work has to be done in this community. We want to see downtown be viable. It's going to come through public safety. It's going to take cleanup. It's going to take enforcement. It's also going to take non-traditional resources to help, well, address some of the issues that exist in that area. Um, Measure U 2018 is critical to bringing resources to the children of this community. We have lots of ideas. There's been lots of uh, investment by community members and community groups to throw ideas around. None of it's viable without the money from Measure U 2018. There's additional information in the lobby, some pamphlets. There's also additional information online at yes on Measure U 2018.com. Also, those that may be interested in signing up and helping with the Yes on Measure U 2018 campaign. Uh, again, that information's in the lobby. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you. On behalf of the League and uh, our co-sponsors, thank you Mr. Mangle and Mr. McNeely for agreeing to come tonight. Uh, we appreciate your willingness to share your knowledge and ideas to educate and inform us, your community members. Other thank yous um, that need to be addressed include our sponsors. Um, I'm the sponsors, Santa Maria Times, the Fund for Santa Barbara County, the NAACP, and the Area um, Agency on Aging in both San Luis and Santa Barbara counties. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, the members of the League who also helped uh, put this together tonight. Lisa Thornhill, Jennifer Dolan, Kurt Greeley, um, Marga Cooley, who was our timer, who was not um, introduced earlier. She was doing her job silently. Um, and Karen Mays, and also Virginia Perry Souza, who is out of town. Lastly, thank you, the audience, for coming. We hope that you um, learned something. I know I was enlightened by hearing um, an impartial discussion of it. Um, lastly, please remember to vote November the 6th. Encourage your friends, encourage everyone that you come in contact with to vote. We also have two more forums scheduled to help us become even more enlightened before voting. Um, the next forum is one being held on September 12th here at the same time, 6.30, and that is for the candidates for the 35th District Assembly seat for the state of California. And then um, our last forum will be next month, October the 11th. That will feature the candidates for the 3rd and the 4th District candidates for the City Council of Santa Maria. So again, thank you for coming and spread the word about what you learned tonight. Good night. Thank you.